Greetings everyone. I would like to welcome everyone of you to today's class. I must commend you for having chosen this course. It's really a good course. The course in procurement is really worth it. And I'm happy that you guys have managed to enroll in this course. Lutete Mika is my name. And I'm going to lecture you guys in procurement law. There is really a lot that we have to cover under procurement law. And I'm going to be taking you through the course outline. Now, like I said, Lutete Mika is my name. And I'm a lawyer by profession with 13 years experience. I think I'm closing in to 14 years. Of course, I hold a Bachelor of Laws degree. A postgraduate diploma in law. And I also have a Master's. With special emphasis to international laws and policies. So I believe I'm the best person who can take you guys in procurement law. But before we divulge further into the course outline, procurement is all about bringing in and taking out. That is why we have the two terms procurement and disposal. You may be ahead of the procurement and disposal unit. But often a time before I go into the content of what I'm supposed to be teaching my students, I engage them. Yes, you are doing this course probably to better your employment for greener pastures to get an addition onto your income, to get that promotion. Yeah. Every one of you guys has different reasons as to why they are doing this course. But let's put it on an individual. How is your buying and selling as an individual? How often do you buy and how often do you sell? It's good business if as an individual you're selling more than what you buy. But in Uganda today, we have more consumers than sellers or producers. That is why most Ugandans are in what we call a vicious circle of poverty. They are in what we call a circle which they have failed to get out from. But I believe together we can get out of that circle. Purpose to be part of the producers. Purpose to be part of the sellers. Purpose to sell something on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, or in a monthly basis. For you to be rich and poor, one of the ways in which you can be rich and for one of the ways in which you can be rich and wealthy is if you earn more than what you spend. Is if your earning on a daily basis or on a monthly basis is way more than your expenditure. Now that means that you'll have enough to use, enough to invest in business, and enough to sell. But you find that most Ugandans to spend more 
than what they earn. Most Ugandans today spend more than what they earn. So their ratio is income plus liabilities equals to expenditure. So my sisters and brothers, think beyond the normal. Purpose to come up with a business which can bring in what I call daily income. Besides that dream job you want. Purpose to begin something which can bring in daily income. Yes, you'll get the dream promotion. You'll get the dream office. But purpose to have something in place which can get you daily income. For you to redeem yourself out of lack, out of loans. Loans from a bank, loans from money lenders loans from circles you find that a person is just moving in loans but i believe that if we purpose on to something we can really get out of it but let's venture into having daily income so let's go into our course outline for procurement law what I'm going to take you guys through. So we are saying under our course description that persons engaged in public offices, corporate entities, and the, bus and the business world require an understanding of legal structures, concepts, and obligations in regard to public procurement and dispose of public assets. Number two, the course seeks to expose business students to the law relating to public procurement. The law relating to public procurement and disposal of public assets in Uganda. Upon completion of this course, Students will be able to apply laws covered to public procurements and disposals. Very important. After this study, I believe beyond reasonable doubt that you will be able to apply what will have covered in your various offices, in your various offices. And that will really make me glad. Learning objectives. To enable students to apply basic legal concepts of fundamental importance in public procurements and disposals. It's very important. Very important. Number two. To enable students analyze and evaluate legal risks associated with public procurement and disposals. And to apply legal concepts and to apply legal concepts to minimize those risks. Number three. To understand the general workings of the legal system in Uganda. It is important for you guys to appreciate the performance of the legal system. You cannot operate a business if you don't know the laws that govern it. That is why you who intend to be in the procurement world or who are already in it need to appreciate procurement law. That's why you need the course. Relevant laws. Of course, we have the primary law under the laws of Uganda. And that is the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda as amended. Number two, we have the leading law under procurement. That is the Public Procurement and Dispose of Public Assets Act. 
2003. We also have the public procurement and disposal of public assets regulations. Don't worry, we'll widen on the scope of those laws. We'll understand them better. But today we are basically going through the unit. So we are talking about the public procurement and disposal of public assets regulations. And under the regulations, we have the central government regulations, local government regulations, public procurement and disposal of public assets guidelines, central government guidelines, the EGP guidelines and the local government guidelines. relevant reading material. In the course of our study, you'll be tasked with enriching your mind. You'll be tasked to have the following laws. You'll need to have a copy of the Constitution. It's very important. You need to have the copy of the public procurement and disposal of public assets, the public procurement and disposal of public assets regulations, the guidelines, the public procurement procedures, handbook. The good thing is that I've already downloaded some of those legal texts onto the e-learning platform. So if you can be able to access it, please just go ahead and access them. You can also get them from Google. You just type in the head note. For example, the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Act 2003. And then you can be able to download and print out a hard copy or save a soft copy of that law. Because in the course of our study, we'll be referring to sections of the law. And for you to understand sections of the law, it is important for you to have a copy so that the lecturer, the lecturer can go through it together with you. And you can be able maybe to underline it and also be able to understand it as he or she reads the law. That's why you need to have copies of the laws. Topics of study. Our first topic under the law of procurement will be the introduction to law. Some of you do not have a legal background. And of course there are those who did business law, maybe at their undergraduate. But for the benefit of those who have never attended law school, who have never done any law course, it is important for us to begin by defining what law is. That's why we are putting an introduction to law. And under introduction to law, there is what we call the definition of law. Definition of law, and then the sources of law in Uganda. If you want anything to do with procurement law, where do you run to? So we'll look at the different sources of law in Uganda. We'll look at the court system in Uganda. It is important for you to know the court system in Uganda and then legal risk analysis and under that we will basically look at the advantages and disadvantages of law in Uganda. So basically that will be a general introduction on law in Uganda. And then number two, we will have what we call a general introduction to procurement. After knowing what law is, now we are limiting ourselves to procurement because it's the reason as to why we, we are doing this course. So we'll define what procurement is, both from a layman's definition and what we call a legal definition of procurement. That is why we are terming it at what pu public procurement is. And then, what is the role of public procurement? Why 
should we do public procurement? Why public procurement? We'll look at that. Why public procurement? Why don't we just buy and, and, and sell anyhow without any special procedure? Why go into public procurement? And then we'll also look at why does public procurement matter to citizens? Why does it matter to citizens? So we'll also look at that. We'll also look at that. Why public procurement matters to citizens will look at. And after that, we'll look at the statutory framework of procurement law in Uganda. The statutory framework of procurement law in Uganda. And when we talk about statutory framework, we are basically talking about written laws involving public procurement in Uganda. What is that written law that talks about public procurement in Uganda? And our main law is the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Act. And that is the law which we are going to address ourselves to in the course of our study. So under that law, we'll define a number of words. And we are going to get those words from the definition section of the PPDA Act. Words like authority, award, bid, bidder, competent authority, contract, disposal, procurement process, and many others. We are going to define them. We are going to define them. We will also look at establishment of the PPDA authority. There is an authority in Uganda that deals with procurement. And that authority is under Section 5. So we will look at it. We will look at the objectives of that authority functions of that authority and the powers of that authority. Those are under sections 6, 7 and 8. We'll look at establishment of the board of directors and its composition. The board of directors is basically the board that runs the authority. So we'll look at it under sections 10 and 11. It is important for you as a student of procurement to know who runs the authority concerning procurements in Uganda. It is important for you to understand that. So we'll also look at the meetings of the board. How do they go about the meetings? Appointment and functions of the executive director of the authority as the chief head, the overall, the technocrat, the person who manages and controls that which is in the authority. We we'll look at the funds of the authority, we we'll look at the composition of a procuring and disposing entity and disposing entity composition. We'll look at the functions and powers of a contracts committee. It's very important. We'll look at the functions and powers of a procurement and disposal unit. That is under section 31 and 32 of the PPD Act. We'll look at the best procurement and disposal principles. There are a number of principles which are laid out under the Act which every procurement officer is supposed to follow. And those are under section 43 to 54 of the PPD Act. So we'll address our minds to them. We'll look at the public procurement and disposal rules under section 55 and 78. We'll also look at the methods of procurement and disposal. 
which methods do you use to procure and which methods do you use to dispose of methods used to procure things into an office and methods used to dispose of things out of an office so we'll look at them under section 79 to 88 and then we'll look at what we have termed as review of decisions of the authority we'll look at the review of decisions of the authority under section 91 of the said act and then after that we'll look at the public procurement and disposal of public assets regulations so the first half is basically the ppda act the public procurement and disposal of public assets act we'll look at all of that content in the first half and after we are done with that we'll look at the public procurement and disposal of public assets regulations and those are regulations which were made in 2014 these these arose the above regulations arose under section 96 1 of the ppda act it's the one which formed the basis for the coming in of the public procurement and dispose of public assets regulations 2014. so we'll read section 96 to see how it paved the way for the coming in of the regulations then we'll have under that we'll have a general overview of the regulations and why they are in place a look at section 96 1 of the ppda act we we'll also look at the public procurement and dispose of public assets guidelines a general overview of the guidelines and why they are in place as noted under section 97 of the ppda act at the end of this module, students will be tested and examined. Of course, testing comes with coursework, examinations, and any other form of assessment as agreed between the lecturer and the students. I'm calling upon all of you to make sure that you attend class. If by chance we happen to ha if by chance we happen to have a physical meeting, purpose to attend. If we if we are attending by Zoom, purpose to be part of the Zoom class. Remember, it is you guys who pay fees, and it would be good for you guys to walk out of this when you understood what procurement law is all about i believe in listening to every student so if you happen to have any problem don't hesitate to call me don't hesitate to get in touch with me i'll be available to take you through procurement law but if you are to attend in case you have any problem get in touch with me so you can reach me on my number, it is my WhatsApp number, MTN, it's 0772-374-437. Let me say it again, 0772-374-437. Have a blessed day and time as we devolve into the human law. Thank you very much. God bless you.